Well, hi, everyone. Um, welcome. I'm Michael Cerami, and I lead uh, strategic partnerships at CPA.com. Uh, I hope you and all those closest to you are safe and healthy and managing as best you can through these very trying times. Um, it's a real pleasure to be back in front of the digital CPA community. Uh, this past Friday, many of you tuned in to hear Eric Auschristen, our CEO, and Pascal Finette of Be Radical talk about operating in today's uncertain times. Uh, we had great feedback on that, that hour long webcast. Um, and rather ironically, and as many of you know, uh, Pascal delivered a keynote and led a disruption map exercise back in December at DCPA 19 on remote workforce. Um, little did we know uh, at the time how prescient the session would prove to be. Um, <laughs> I, think if, I think if today's circumstances have taught us anything, it, it's the digital transformation uh, is not something to be considered and contemplated uh, as you have the time. It truly becomes business imperative. Um, you know, fortunately, what we have learned through conversations with many of you over the past weeks and months is that this community, the digital CPA community, has probably been as prepared as any to navigate through this, this new normal. Uh, you've been working in the cloud, you've been expanding and pushing into advisory services, you've been experimenting with new staffing models uh, for a while now. Um, you know, with that said, uh, the world changed pretty dramatically 60 days ago. Uh, you're all in the midst of a tax season has been uh, completely turned upside down. Uh, most of you are on the front lines of, of small business relief, you know, helping clients with guidance and support. Uh, you yourselves are having to adjust to, to new work arrangements, um, you know, managing family and balancing family and, and work. Uh, and all admits the backdrop of a pretty serious uh, health crisis. Uh, and so this is what inspired today's short webinar. It's, uh, it's something that's new for us. We're excited about it. And we're even more excited to have back with us Lisa Bodette, the CEO of FutureThink. Hey, Lisa. Thanks for having me, Michael. It's a pleasure. Um, so Lisa is, is yet another digital CPA alum. Uh, she delivered an outstanding keynote uh, also back in December entitled Simplifying to Innovate. Uh, it was very well received. And as we do with, with you know, all of the speakers we work with at Digital CPA, we've stayed connected to Lisa. Uh, so just a couple of weeks ago, you know, uh, we were having a conversation about this community and kind of in general, we've been seeing across the, the firm landscape. Uh, immediately, Lisa popped up and said, hey, wouldn't it be great to stand up a quick 15, 20 minute work hack? Uh, you know, everyone's having, you know, Zoom meeting overload. You know, let's <laughs> lean in and you know, make sure people aren't just meeting, but rather having meaningful collaboration. So it, it was great. It was great for Lisa to, to raise her hand and really we're experimenting with this very brief uh, 15 to 20 minute uh, webinar. So while we're all dealing with a little bit of COVID-19 fatigue, uh, we thought, uh, you know, having Lisa come in and provide some inspiration and insight would be a, a great way to break up today. And so with that, Lisa, I want to go ahead and invite you to kick things off. Love it. Thanks, Michael. And I'm, I'm uh, flattered to be called a, a digital CPA alum. So thank you. <laughs> flattered and honored. And for everybody here today, thank you for joining. I know that you are incredibly busy. Um, you know, uh, PPP has everybody uh, consumed right now, delayed tax seasons, all kinds of chaos going on with COVID. So we wanted to provide you a little bit of relief in terms of giving you something that's meaningful for you and your teams to be able to use because um, we know that you are time starved, time strapped, and you, you committing to come today, we've got to give you something of value. So what we're going to do today is we want to give you um, something that's topical and timely and have you learned something new in less time than it takes for you to finish a cup of coffee. So hence the 15 minute work hack webinar. Just some uh, quick housekeeping for everybody. I'm pretty sure you know how to use Zoom, but we are gonna interact. On your toolbar, we're gonna use the chat. Feel free to type something in. If you have a question, we're gonna get to that at the end. We're gonna raise our hands. In fact, just for fun, can everybody right now raise their hand for me? No. <laughs> 
either how Michael just did it or online. Thank you, everybody. Um, and then, of course, there's q and I prefer that we're actually using the chat box. If we could focus there, that would be great. Let's dive in. Thank you. Everyone's raising their hand. Della, Deborah. Great. Jessica, thank you and welcome. So here is the topic of the day. Stop meeting and start collaborating. And the reason I wanted to do this is the reality is for everybody is that meeting isn't new. We've been meeting remotely for a long time, but it's been more sporadic versus consistent. And the problem is everyone feels now that if they've got to just talk to each other, they set up a Zoom meeting. And it's starting to cause fatigue because they're not being productive and they're overwhelming. How can we run them better? So that's what you're going to learn how to do today with three quick tips. But what I want to do before we dive into this new way of engagement is I want to level set here and ask you all a question through a poll. And I want to see how well are you and your teams currently collaborating. So Casey, who is launching a poll right now for us, I'd love for you to answer this question. What statement best describes how your team currently collaborates remotely? One is we don't collaborate. The next is mm, it's just a meeting online via team, Zoom, whatever. The next one is we've tried some basic tools like chat. Next answer is we actively collaborate and work through shared docs, whiteboards, all kinds of ways. And finally, we continually use tools, frameworks, and challenges to solve problems remotely, right? We've got this down. So let me have everybody right now put in their answer to this question and let's see what we come up with. Casey, okay, so if you launch that poll. We'll give you about 10 seconds here. Answers ranging from we don't collaborate to we continually do it. All right, Casey, if you think we've got everybody's answers, let's launch some results. Okay. Well, the majority wins here. Collaboration is just meeting online. Thank you for saying that. I thought you might say that because that's really what's happening now. I want to move you up the ladder and I want to get you down to what 14% of the people said, which is we continually use tools versus just using technology. So in case if you want to close that poll, what we're going to do now is we're going to dive in and figure out how can we get you better collaborating. So there's three ways. The first is I want us to start normalizing being virtual. It's not what you think. Number two, two is I want us to use tools, not just technology. The takeaway here is technology is not a strategy. And then number three, I want us to avoid collaboration overload and embrace what I call a mini mindset. So let's explore what that means. By the way, there's gonna be a lot of tips and tricks throughout here. So if you have a pen and paper, have it by you because we're gonna zoom through these pretty quickly. So the first thing I wanna talk about is normalizing being virtual. And I think what people are struggling with right now is um, setting up what I'll call norms of engagement not rules of engagement, but norms of engagement. And what I mean by that is, oh God, but now everybody's got to see me, am I on video, not on video? What does my background look like? One of the things I want to recommend to everybody here is using video. And I know a lot of companies were hesitant to do that, but I think actually mandating it within your team, barring any issues or technology constraints is a good idea. And here's why. Imagine in the old world when we actually met in person, um, what it would be like to walk into a conference room and half the people were under the table and half of them were sitting at the table. That's what it's like when you have a call with half on video and half without. And what's interesting about that is, is it doesn't necessarily build a sense of trust. And what's great about video is, yes, it's a little bit more exposing, but it really gets people engaged. It builds trust, it builds accountability, and it lets us see the nonverbals, which we know in human communication is so important. What's interesting using video is we know that people are 27% more productive and engaged when you do it because audio is passive, video is active, and we're less likely to multitask, which I'm sure many of you are doing right now, and that's fine, but it allows us to also be more present. And there's some social psychology beside, behind video, and that is we know that when people are on a call, like right now, if I could see everybody, Half of the time you would be looking at the presenter or the person talking. The other half, you would be looking at yourself. And that's because we're checking our norms of behavior. And this actually comes from um, mirroring. And there's an interesting study that was done in social psychology with bars in Chicago. 
And the bars where the patrons were best behaved were the ones that had mirrors behind the bartenders. And the reason why was because people could see themselves and they were better behaved as a result. In fact, the studies showed that, and this is interesting, bars that had mirrors behind the bartenders, people acted differently. They were less drunk and rowdy. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen in your meetings. Less drunk and rowdy, but they were more self-aware, professional, and patient. So when you think people aren't engaged or you think that there's something particularly difficult, it always helps to build trust by being on video. Now, how can you actually get people to normalize that? One of the things you can do is share your environment. Now I'm posting up this, this meme here, which is funny. It's the di diagram of a Zoom meeting and your attention span. Really, you're not paying a lot of attention to the content because you're distracted. How do you look? Oh my God, my cat's jumping up on my keyboard. My kids are running in. Can you see that thing in the background? I think people are less hung up about that now because it's the new normal. But we've heard from a lot of companies that actually really normalize it by getting their teams online in their status meetings and they actually have a, a virtual field trip and they have people show each other their offices or some artifact in their office that tells them something about them. You're looking in my dining room right now, which is where I'm broadcasting from. Um, you're looking at one of my famous, my favorite paintings behind me. I like to collect art. Um, and it's not necessarily great art, but art that I like. And it tells a little bit about me as a human. I think doing that with your teams can really make people build trust faster. So next time you're together, have a little field trip and share each other's environment. Normalize the behavior. Hey, Lisa, I just want to chime in there real quick. I, you know, it, it's funny when we were in a conversation the day when someone had mentioned the same exact thing, they're saying, and I'm right. this perspective of CPAs, you know, and they were starting to meet with their CPA for the first time where they, they saw that, that environment, that backdrop you brought into the video and it really <laughs> helped humanize them. They weren't just seeing them in a suit or, you know, shirt and tie. Um, and it really made them more approachable and, and kind of helped to, to build the relationship. So that's a, Great point. I think, Michael, that's going to be one of the key things that we see coming out of this is what used to be weird becomes better. Yes. And right, because it used yeah. to be weird and people were, I mean, I don't, I don't care if you're wearing sweatpants right now and you've got a shirt, it doesn't matter. People can still be professional, but comfortable. Right. And I think actually um, we've spent so many years taking the human out of business that it's, um, that's what's made us have a lack of trust. And I think now being more human is going to make people um, better leaders and better team members. So thank you for saying that. Let's go to number two. I think number one is something people knew, but they weren't just quite sure about. Number two is something I want to stress, which is it's important for you when you conduct a meeting, not just to rely on the tech, but to rely on tools. And so I want to give you a few tools that you can use to get your teams to better collaborate versus just your usual Q&A chat and polling. I'm giving you a couple tools today that I thought might be helpful to get people unstuck Right now, a lot of people are paralyzed and don't know how to move their business forward virtually. These are a couple things you could use to do that. The first thing is called kill a stupid rule. And this is where we've had lots of teams get online and they've said, we're gonna take 30 minutes, we're gonna use the chat box, and we would like you to free flow for five minutes, type in every stupid rule, norm, assumption, way that we work that you would like to get rid of right now. Question how we work. Those themes start to roll in. The average that we have in 30 minutes is over a hundred ideas. And it allows people to eliminate, identify and eliminate unnecessary work. How it can work, and this is something we did virtually, this is a scrolling bar of, we asked people at AT&T, hey, what kinds of things really drive you crazy? And quickly, within 30 minutes, we got hundreds of responses. And what was interesting were the themes were consistent. What I'd like you to be able to do is use chat have a moderator, discuss the themes that come up, and on the spot be able to tackle the top themes or say that you'll take them away and come back in your next 30 minute meeting and present the top themes or top ideas as a poll and have people vote on the rules to kill. It can be really collaborative and a great way to get people moving out of fear and into business function. Would you like to kill a stupid rule, Michael? <laughs> Maybe there's, there's a, a number I'm trying to figure out which one to kill <laughs> which one to do well if you can't figure out the rule let's give you the next tool and this is called impossible to possible and what's interesting about this is a lot of people right now are figuring out the new ways to work and what they um, they think is just impossible and isn't necessarily impossible 
And the trick here is getting people to collaborate on all the things that they think are either, and I'll show you this, industry impossibles, customer impossibles, or maybe they're internal impossibles. And you can pick one of these before your next meeting and get people to come with their ideas of what their impossibles are around the topic you choose or challenge you choose. Have them type it into the chat box again for five minutes, all the things they think are impossible. If you can, then put pair people up either offline or online and have them swap impossibles. And the reason why is there's social psychology around the ability that we are better at solving other people's problems than our own. And we are better at solving other people's impossibles because we, we don't have any assumptions around them. And you'll be able to turn what were challenges into solutions quite quickly, either in breakout rooms or using chat online. And if you wanna know more about this technique, I'm happy to share more about this at the end. The last thing I wanna do, and I wanna leave people with, is the phase that we're moving into now, which is collaboration overload. We're either not collaborating well, and so that's why I wanna normalize it with behaviors and give you tools to get it started or we're overdoing it. And so what's interesting is there's a few tips and tricks we can help you with to allow people to collaborate better and maybe even a little less. So there's a few quick tips I wanna share with you. The Cleveland Clinic, uh, which is a partner of ours, they have mini meetings. And so they make sure that all their things are stand-ups. They're 15 minutes long and they are topic specific and they are in and out in 15 minutes. Another one at one of our pharmaceutical clients, a division within Pfizer, is they have meeting only days. So rather than no meeting days, they have only one day a week where meetings can happen. So it's a different way to guardrail your time. Another one is called drop-off meetings. And you have to think of the meeting as like an inverted pyramid, like a status meeting where you have all the things that pertain to everybody up front, and then slowly you get to more focused and focused part of the meetings and more and more people drop off until it's just a very focused group at the end, like a carpool. And then the last one that I really like is the uninvite. And this is a metric we use within our company, and I know divisions within Merck do as well, that is a, it is a badge of honor to be uninvited to a meeting because your time is too important to attend that meeting. So the more that you can tell people, hey, you are not invited to this meeting and they're okay with it, the more likely they're able to get time back for things that really matter. So let me just sum it up. We want to normalize by being, normalize being virtual, both in terms of setting norms of behavior, being on video, and normalizing the space to make us more human. We want to use tools, not just tech. Tech is not a strategy. And then finally, we want to avoid collaboration overload by having that mini mindset, whether it's shorter meetings, whether it's drop-off meetings, or being uninvited at the end. So I don't know, any of those appeal to you, Michael? Any tips that you could use? I think they're great. I think it's, uh, I like how you've packaged them uh, in a very digestible way. Um, you know, I really like particularly three, some of those options that you gave people. Because I do, I think, you know, I think, look, we're clearly in this period of adjustment. And I think people, to some degree, are, are you know, going through meeting overload just to show that they're, they're being productive or trying to be productive, that they're, you know, they're paying attention, they're engaged. I think like with most things, right, maybe the pendulum swung too far the other way. Now you've got, you've got to bring a little bit more sanity to your day. But so this is the, this is the, this is the normalizing um, session today. So this is, um, and, and what I'd like to do now, by the way, is Michael and I are, are, are talking. I want to segue into, please use your chat box. Um, I want to segue into some, some questions. People already started using chat, so that's why I want to segue to the chat box versus Q&A. Um, we've got some good questions here, Michael, that I do want to bring up. We do. Um, I was going to throw one to you, unless you, I don't know if you were finishing a thought there. Well, I did want to say, I think you brought up something interesting, which is the pendulum has swung. And this is, um, you know, my company, FutureThink, as you know, and we talked about this at Digital CPA, is, you know, our job is to teach innovation and change. And most people naturally resist it. And it's interesting to think that just two months ago, most people would tell you that we would never work, we could never have a completely 100% remote workforce. You would yeah. never have a successful event 100% remote. And guess what? COVID was the forcing. <laughs> Surprise, you can. But I, I think we will get back to a new normal. It's not, it's going to be a hybrid going forward. And so what's nice about this is it's forced us to accept new ways of working. And I think just figuring out what the norms are that fit our culture is where people are now. They're kind of, they're, they're starting to stabilize a little bit. 
I think you're right. And, and as part of that adjustment, let's bring in one of the, one of the questions we, we had, uh, Lisa, is you, I think because we're in this period of adjustment too, people are learning how to do this. You've got, you know, people who still are without, you know, maybe you have younger children or right. other people at home that weren't really at home before this all happened. And you're trying to figure out how to do that. And so if someone raises a great question about, well, how do you, what's the protocol? What's the, maybe a, an elegant way of, of maybe um, communicating to people that some of the, the, the seeing the environment's great, but sometimes if there's people walking around the background or people in a kind of interfering in the call, how do you maybe have those, those difficult conversations? Well, I like what you just said, excuse me, <coughs> if I can be human here and clear my throat. Um, I think there's a balance and that's part of the setting up the norms, which is one of the things I've, I, I heard from one of our clients is they said they had a session about let's set up the norms of how we want to have meetings going forward. And they did a session called things that drive me crazy. <laughs> and they yeah. had everybody type in the things that drive them crazy, of course, not about their coworkers, but from other meetings they've had before. And they talked about how do they integrate those into their new norms of working. So there were certain things that were, um, non-negotiables. Everybody had to be on video for these meetings, these set of meetings. Every meeting had to be no longer than this amount. They weren't going to set meetings for this time period because that's when a lot of people's um, kids had to get on to um, their Zoom school, right? Those, those were norms for right now. Um, right. Everyone always had to be on mute unless they were talking. Um, so that's a, that's a gentle way of being able to express things that drive you nuts and, be, and not be personal about it but make sure that we set some norms around them. Because I, I do think it is uh, important that people have to set a, 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 a sacred place, as some people have said, for work. But we do know that there might be some interruptions. But it shouldn't be in a public area where there's lots of traffic, for example. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I, setting the norm is probably the first thing that most of these teams need to do. Well, in, in this period of adjustment, what do you, uh, again, we're in it. it how long do you think something like that takes? I mean, I, I agree with you. It's such a state of flux. Everything's so fluid, meaning I think people are kind of waiting and anticipating, are we going back? Are things going to go back to the way they were? I think a lot of people feel like it's, it's changed for good, maybe not to the extreme it is now, but this will have a lasting impact. What, what are your, what's your thinking on, on that in general? I think things usually settle in the middle. I think it won't, it won't go back to, I, I mean, in a good way. I'd like to spin this as a positive thing, which is I think that the, um, while there's a lot of terrible things that have happened with COVID, the positive thing is it's gonna inject more humanity into business. It's mm -hmm. gonna inject more flexibility into business. And it's gonna force us to have changes and, and stop doing things that we didn't realize were just so unnecessary. Yeah. yeah. You know. And I, I think that that's, it really focuses on what's most important. So that's a great forcing function right there. Um, I, what we are seeing right now is, this is typical in terms of change waves, change arcs, which is the early stages, paralyzed by fear, unsure of technology, getting used to just new ways of work and settling in. So that's where people are, are now, but they're getting into the setting the norms. They've tried Zoom out, what do we do? What are, what's annoying? Let's get the norms in place. We're quickly going to be moving into, I think, next month and the month after. Um, the um, let's just, God, let's just get some business done already. We got sure. it, and that's where you're going to move into step two here, which is tools, not just tech. We got the tech. We know what we need to do now. What do we do? Sure, that makes and then, sense. And then the overload. I think um, you know that's what we've been seeing, right? I, you know, we. we it's kind of three different buckets. Bucket one was just, you know, crisis hits and you're reacting to the crisis and, and it's that period of chaos. We're now in this period of kind of the forgiveness period. You know, how are we just, you know, continue to help um, clients manage through this? And then we'll sh very quickly, we're transitioning into kind of the restarting of business and the economy, which is what you just referred to. And I, I think really firms, you know, need to be poised uh, to be able to act on that, because that's that's going to happen quick. Um, so and, here's and one of the well, sure. one of the great things that you all do, and I noticed this at Digital CPA is, you know, you you're you're getting people um, into the the digital world, right? In terms of being online and using software set to facilitate productivity, but also, thank God, the the new way of work, and right. that is people are going to be remote. 
they're going to be more productive. And, you know, you think about even in-person things, everything's just going to be hybrid going forward because it's going to be more, you're still going to want the human touch in some instances, but mm -hmm. in others, just for even work-life balance uh, for employees and expense saving for employers, people are going to be allowed to be remote and work from home. So, so Lisa, I have one more question for you, and then I think maybe you had one. I, I want to be respectful and try to wind this down, you know, by half past the hour. Um, I, you know, you'll have different group, you know, we have different people on this call. Some are maybe leaders of their firms, some maybe are, are you know, part of the staff. I, I, I know that I'm sure some people are sitting there feeling like, I would love to have these rules set or some guidance and protocol policy around this but again I, if i'm an individual in a firm and maybe not a decision maker how do we get how do we kind of get some of this stuff done because i think do, do think this does add to productivity but some people may not feel like they're in a in a you know can they set personal boundaries and guidelines um what's maybe some of your guidance to them that maybe feel disempowered to drive this sometimes the, um yeah i think that's a really good point which is for some of the people that aren't in that leadership position it's about setting the norm so what we've seen for example this is a good example at um at fidelity and what we had is we had some of the people that were setting their own norms and behaviors within their own meetings right they can do it for the meetings that are within their sphere of control they mm -hmm. set the norms and then what they found is because they were the only ones that had set the norms suddenly how they were doing it became the way that the team did it so it's right. more like a best practice and a quick win. Makes sense. Well, good. I want to give you final maybe question or point to make, and then I think we can we can wind down. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Because I do want to. When we say fifteen minutes plus Q and I love that you're that you're sticking <laughs> to it, right? Because we want to be cognizant of people's time. Their time starts. Um, someone did ask, and I I appreciate it. Um, someone has typed separately, you know, which of the tools, which of the things do I recommend the most? Um, setting norms of behaviors is the first one I would do. Um, and the next one I would do is actually try to get that mini mindset of how can you do um, less meetings, but more productive meetings. So that's where I would focus. Um, people did also ask, Michael, can we get the PowerPoint? And the answer is yes, I'll send that over so people can get a copy and ideally um, try and use one of these tips with their teams. Perfect. Well, great. Well, well, again, I, you know, we're all going through a, uh, you know, a period perhaps like none other. Um, and I think, you know, I know, like kind of, I opened up with, I think this community, the digital CPA community is probably as, as um, prepared to deal with what's happening as, as any, you know, we started talking about the cloud, you know, 12 years ago, we were using zoom a decade ago. I mean, this is, this is something that's, you know, anyone that's attended digital CPA, this is, it, it's truly a group of progressive firms. I think those firms have really, it's helped to make this transition uh, easier. Um, but I just think with, with all that's going on, it's going to be, you know, the you know, kind of guidance and insights like this are just ways to really just now to build on, um, on, on re refining and polishing and just becoming you know, more productive and efficient and, and uh, frankly, more valuable with clients. And it, it is, it's a balance. So Lisa, I want to thank you on behalf of everyone for this. I think this has been, been great. It, it thank was you. Fun. And I think what we're going to be looking to do for the group is to do these um, more frequently, you know, possibly twice a month, you know, maybe at least once a month where we're bringing kind of you know, these little quick educational perspectives uh, that folks can put into practice pretty quickly. Uh, and we'll look to be bringing Lisa, you know, Lisa into these conversations with us. So thank you again, Lisa. This has been great. Thanks, and Michael. Thank you all of you. Thanks, everybody. Good luck. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.